This video is for those using ATM Mini or Mini Pro switches and are looking for alternative ways to control their ATM Mini switches during training and presentation sessions. What I'm going to share with you in this video should also work if you are using the higher end ATM Mini switches. In this video, I will show you how I configure buttons on TouchOSC MK2 to control the ATM Mini switches. Welcome to another episode of Amazing Sticky Presentations inspired by Sticky Spy, bringing you tips, ideas, design for better presentations, turning your ideas into lasting impressions. Hey, if you are new to this channel and don't know me, my name is Tian Tech, and I help individuals communicate with confidence through high impact presentations. I have previously made a video about using Touch OSC to control my ATM Mini Pro switcher. That was Touch OSC MK1. Around June 2021, Touch OSC MK2 was released and it's now more powerful and also more complex. A quick disclaimer here. I'm not an expert in Touch OSC. In fact, I am also learning as I go along. What I'm sharing with you in this video is how I use TouchOSC MK2 to control my ATM Mini Pro switcher. It should be enough to get you started if you are also considering using TouchOSC MK2 to control your ATM Mini switcher. This new version of TouchOSC is now integrated into one. The same software is a touch controller as well as the editor. The software is available on Mac OS, Windows and Linux platforms. I use a MacBook Pro for my workflow. So this video will refer only to Mac OS, but it should be the same for other platforms as well. In my workflow, I use touch OS C from my iPad to control my ATM Mini Pro during my presentations and training sessions. I also bought the Touch OS C for Mac OS so that I can design my control interface on my MacBook Pro, which is a lot easier compared to designing it on the iPad. As the software is now both a touch interface as well as an editor, I can do my design and testing directly on my MacBook Pro. Let's look at how I set up my workflow so that the same touch OSC interface file can be used on both my MacBook Pro and iPad. To do this, I'm going to draw out my workflow diagram so it's easier to understand. As you can see from this diagram, I have saved my touch OSC design file in iCloud so that it is shared between my MacBook Pro and iPad. You can also do this with Dropbox Google Drive, or any cloud service that you subscribe, or even just using manual file transfer. In my workflow, using Touch OSC on my MacBook Pro is only for the purpose of designing the touch interface. To use it during my training sessions, the layout file is loaded onto Touch OSC on my iPad. On my MacBook Pro, I will have the ATM software control and ATM OSC running. ATM OSC is needed as it is how Touch OSC talks to ATM software control. To get all connected properly, all these devices, the Mac, the iPad, and ATM mini switcher needs to be on the same network. If you are on your home network with one router, you should be fine. Your IP address for your devices would likely all start with, for example, 192.168.1.x, where x is any number from 2 to 254 assigned to each of your devices. I use a green screen as my background. So on my ATM Mini Pro, I use Chroma for my upstream key, and I have macros with different x, y positions and sizes to position myself at different areas on my slides. If you are not using a green screen, then you can have macros to set the position 
of your DVE instead. Okay, let me now briefly show you how to add control buttons on a blank layout on TouchOSC MK2. Okay, so let's take a look at the TouchOSC layout. When you first open the TouchOSC software, you could see that the layout is a vertical layout. And what I want to do is to change it to a horizontal layout so that I can use it on my iPad or also on my iPhone. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size to something that will fit on the iPhone and also on the iPad. So I'm going to change it to 667 by 375. Okay, that would do. So you could see that the layout already has been switched to a horizontal format. Let me enlarge it a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to add a button so that when I touch or press on the button on my iPad, uh, which is on this layout, I would be able to activate a function on my ATM Mini Pro. So in order to create a button, all I need to do is to right click on my mouse or do a two finger tap on my trackpad. So once you add a button, you could see that the button is by default square. You could move the button around. You could resize it by dragging it to the size that you want. And you could also see that the button will have a corner there. Okay, that is because that's the outline of this rectangle button. Okay, the color is red, that's the fill. On the right side, you could see a lot of information about the button. So one of the things that you can see is here, that you can see that the color is red, has been picked. You can ensure that the button is visible. If I click remove the tick, it will be invisible, right? Uh, you can ensure that yeah, the, the background is turned on. So if I remove that, I could see that the background is empty, is transparent. Right? Uh, and only the outline is being shown. And the outline right now is shown as just the corners. So let me just click that again. And so the outline, you could see that the outline, if I remove that tick, the outline will be gone. Wow, the whole thing is gone. So let me just bring that back. So I'm going to bring it back, the outline. Right now, the outline is being defined as corners. You can change it to a full or just edges. So I'm going to select full and let's see what happens. Right. So you could see that that is a full outline there. Right. The outline. The button is a full shape. Great. So let's move back there and I want to leave it that way uh, with the outline, with, uh, with a background as well. And I could also change the corner. Right now you could see the corner is quite sharp. I can change it to more rounded by adding uh, more pixels to the radius. So select that. And under the corner, I can increase the radius size. I'm going to increase to five. You can see that the corner now is more rounded. Okay, that's exactly what I want now. Um, I don't like the red button, so I'm going to change the color. Click on it. And from here, I can change the color of the button. I want it to be green, yeah, the bright green. Okay, I'm good with that. So deselect it right now. And that I have a button. So what I need to do next is to maybe give a name to the button. So in order to give a name, I do a right click again to add in now not a button, but a label, right? So you can see that the label is there. So I'm going to move the label in. I can resize the label. Right. I can also use my arrow keys on my keyboard to move uh, very precisely where I want it to be placed. I don't need a background for my label so I'm going to remove the background so remove that tick of the background and I do not need the outline remove the outline so that's my label the next thing to do is that I should label or I should give a name to the label so that you know the button has a name and not just call label right so I'm going to select that from there I move down and under values 
I can turn on the text if it's not been on you can click and you can turn on the text so let me just change that value there instead of just label I can say camera one okay camera one this button will be called camera one and when I click on this button it's supposed to change the source of my ATM mini pro to the camera one source great so that's done the next thing to do is to program the button to ensure that when I touch on it or click on it it will activate a function on my ATM mini pro to get my ATM mini pro to switch to camera one okay so to do that on touch OSD just select the button again and go down all the way to a section called messages and what we want to do is to add a OSC message right, to trigger an OSC message we don't need the mini uh, so if you like you could remove that by clicking on the X and click OK to remove the MIDI message so I only need the OSC button and from there I must ensure that my button is enabled right there the check box is there I would want to send a signal when the button is clicked or touched and I also would like to receive a signal back from my ATM Mini Pro uh, under connections we only have one connection that means I only have one ATM Mini Pro so I would have only one connection and in order to trigger it I'm going to use the X as a trigger right and from there I would say that keep it to rise okay the next thing to do here is under address now I have to tell what message to send to my ATM Mini Pro and this is where I will add a message so that OSC can tell ATM Mini Pro uh, to activate certain function I don't need the word name I'm going to delete it all I need is just one holder from there I click I could see that there's a constant that means whatever I put there will be safe click at the constant and slash ATM slash program slash number one so that is for camera one how do I know where to get the command let me now show you the ATM OSC software that is running at the background of my computer so I'm going to switch to there you can see here if I click on the address tab you could it will display all the commands that I can use on my touch OSC to communicate with the ATM mini pro so what I just did was I used this thing camera one and I was using this the ATM program one right and that's what I just did okay so let's get back to this part once I have completed this button I can just select the button and move it to wherever position that I need or I can make a copy of the button by just doing a copy and then I paste it back all right and so that I can have a second button so in this case I, I do not have to recreate the button again because it's kind of the same button but different function and in here I would change the label to camera 2 and of course I need to change the source of the button right? the message right here instead of program 1 I would say let me have program 2 instead so now it will go to camera 2 and touch so I can keep on duplicating the button uh, for the different sources on my ATM Mini Pro so my ATM Mini Pro have four different source uh, uh, for camera so I can duplicate under the two button so I have this layout that I created four buttons for my ATM Mini Pro camera one which is my main camera and I have three other sources that is connected to the HDMI port on my ATM Mini Pro in this case I also name it accordingly so I have my slides I have my demo computer connected to the source I also have my second camera so I have my top camera which is my camera 2 that I mounted above me 
So if you have created macros on your ATM Mini Pro, you can also activate that macro by just a touch of the button. A couple of macros that allows me to put myself on different positions on the screen. And in order for me to activate those macro on my touch OSC, I need to create additional buttons. And that's what I'm going to do right now. As usual, I can do a two finger tap on my trackpad and select a button to create a new button or I can make a copy of existing button which is faster. So I'm going to make a copy of existing button. Right now make a copy and then I will paste it back and drag it to a different position. So let's take a look at the button. I resize it to the size that I like and I don't like the color green so what I'm going to do is going to change it to red color, a bright red and that is good. The other thing that I want is also I wanted the outline you know, to fill up the whole rectangle. So I select outline and instead of corners, it will be a full outline. So you take a look there. Another thing that we need to change is that for this button, I wanted it to also activate the release. So when I press on it and release, that is what's going to happen for this button. That's done. The next thing that I need to do here is to reprogram the button or assign a different command to the button. Remember that the button was copied over from the existing button and it will retain the previous command or, or in this case address. So what I need to do is to click on that and to change that, I'm going to go there and delete away that address and go back to my ATM OSC software that was running uh, at the background of my computer and clicking on addresses I'm going to scroll down to the place where it says macros right there right, so here I have a command that says run macro at a certain index uh, I will copy that command right there make a copy and then let's go back to the touch OSC layout and I'm going to do a paste I also need to replace the index holder with the actual index of the macro. So I can remember that my index of the macro that I used was 3. So I'm going to plus 3 there and then that's it. So in order for me to run another macro, I can do the same thing. Copy and paste, right? Copy and then paste that button and move it to a new position and maybe have it a new size right that's what i want to do right there right again everything else remain the same all i need to do is to change the position of the macro that was recorded on my atm mini pro so instead of three now i want to use macro four and once that's done i do the same thing again copy and paste and then I move it to the other position and there I have and this one I would want macro number five right macro number five that's it position that nicely and there I have and that's it a layout that allows me to switch different sources on my ATM Mini Pro as well as also run a couple of different macros that will place me on different position on the screen. So to run this layout, all I need to do is to press the run button you know, on touch OSC. So when I click run, you could see that now I can actually click on the button, right? And it will activate the command on my ATM Mini Pro. To get out of the run mode, move to the dot at the top right hand corner here. Can you see that? Right, and click on it. It will switch back to the edit mode on my Touch OSC software. This is how you could start designing your Touch OSC layout using Touch OSC MK2. You can download this simple layout to help you start your design. The download link is provided in the description below. I hope you are enjoying learning from this video. 
if this is the type of content that you like, do me a favor and click on the like button down below. And if you are not subscribed and you like to learn more about presentations, click the subscribe button and the bell so that you get notification every time I upload a new video. I love to have you as a part of this channel and the community we are all growing. So join us and if you do decide to subscribe, welcome to the channel. I spend quite a fair bit of time figuring out how to program and get TouchOSC MK2 to work. As the documentation provided is quite technical and was not very user friendly at all. Here is an advanced layout that I designed for my workflow. With this layout, I can easily switch to different sources connected to my ATM Mini Pro. I can place myself on different areas of the screen when I conduct my presentations and training classes. I can turn myself on and off, all with a touch of a button. This layout also allows me to use any image stored in the ATM media player as my virtual background. Let's say, during my lecture, I wanted to just talk with my students and I don't want to show my slide. I can easily switch to the ATM media player and use that as my virtual background. With the recent update of the ATM OSC software, I'm now also able to accurately reposition myself on the fly without macros. This is so useful because sometimes when presenting, the preset position that I have built in a macro might be blocking some information on the slide. And being able to just shift your position a little using a slider interface. Wow, that is so awesome. Using this advanced layout during my presentations and training is a lifesaver for me. If you like my advanced layout, you can also download it. It includes my ATM macros file that you can use immediately. Link to the download is in the description area below. That's all I have to share with you in this video. Until my next video, start using TouchOSC with your ATM Mini Pro to supercharge your presentation sessions. Bye-bye.